what is the actual difference in physiology between an intermediate athlete and an elite competitor. We actually have a way of demonstrating that to you. To help us with the demonstration, Train Red actually sent us a box with not only one, but four of their devices. And these are muscle oxygen sensors. So what we will find in this package is this cute little device. It basically tells us how much, how much oxygen we have in the muscle at a particular point in time. We basically set up Luca and Joel, each one with one device, and we place the device on the uh, vastus lateralis, which is like a part of your prime mover of the uh, knee extensor, basically like your quad. What did we expect to see in this experiment? As I said earlier, muscle oxygenation is kind of a proxy for intensity. When the athletes are front squatting at a very light weight, they're not desaturating as much as when they're squatting at a very hi high weight. Do you think it would be such a difference? Luca? Uh, I'm RX2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> what do you think, Joel? Am I elite then? <laughs> <laughs> but he is a teenage on no, RX. I'm 20. <laughs> yeah, yeah. teenage. That's just real quick. Yes. And for that you just need to stand still and don't move for maybe 20 seconds. So, and once this is ready, I can see your muscle oxygenation in your legs. And basically what it's measuring is like, how much blood flow and how much oxygenation is going to your tissue and your legs. And this is like a very leg dominant workout. That's why we're also measuring on the leg. Uh, and what we can see here now is like your oxygenation. So when you're at rest, you're usually at something between like 60 to 70%. But this isn't like a comparative value. So we can't say, oh, you're at 70 and you're at 67. So this is a difference. Um, it's more like a matter of like uh, individual differences. But what we're looking for are actually trends because once you start moving, your muscles are actually consuming the oxygen. And when you're very efficient at the movement, you don't need as much oxygen. But when you're inefficient or when the weight gets very heavy or you're pushing very hard, your muscles are using a lot of oxygen. And now this is kind of the idea with this like comparative analysis uh, to see what the difference is there. But I will tell you more on this once we finish. And the workout was pretty nasty because it had echo bike and front squat at increasing weight. So the workout was three rounds for time. Athletes had to do 30 cals on the bike and then 30 front squats at a light weight, 20 front squats at an intermediate weight and 10 front squats at a heavyish weight. Basically what we've seen now with this setup at 60 kilos front squat is the difference between level basically. Luca is like much stronger, has much higher capacity 
and he doesn't desaturate as much when he's moving their weight because it's like so much below his threshold and he has like so much like spare capacity he would have whereas Joel is like closer to his maximum it's like closer to his max capacity and his threshold and he just needs more breaks in order to recover and this is kind of reflected in the muscle oxygenation profile where Luca is more like a flat profile uh, whereas Joel is a lot more up and down and you can kind of see when his oxygenation is very low he needs to rest because the intensity is very high and the oxygenation is always like correlated with the intensity. Front squats, there are so much uh, more volume than me uh, to push through the reps. Yeah. So when it comes to 60, they both just push. Yeah. But on the bike, I hold the, the butt that I wanted. So. Yeah. yeah, as I said, I think you did a very good job with the pacing because you came out doing 10 front squats, that's 80 and broken, that's very good. I, could, I think I, if I would plan it a little better, I maybe could have gone better, but finish strong <laughs> yeah first round you you are not uh, able to do fast go controlled control your breathe then uh, be smart on uh, on the barbell for the first 13 reps then second is uh, I think more important for the head you know? because if you go to the barbell after second one you are uh, you are the first after 20 squats with 16 your legs are uh, burning and then you must uh, go as fast as, the, as you can on the bike in these graphics you can basically see the difference in physiology between an elite and an intermediate level athlete at this point the workout started that means both of them were at the bike and obviously when we start an activity Oxygen is going to extract, get extracted because a muscle need to use it in order for to fuel itself. Athletes got off the bike and started their front squats. With the light barbell, we didn't see that much of a difference, even though uh, Joel had to oxygenate a bit more in order to get through the front squats. That means he had to lose like a bigger fraction of what was loaded in the muscle, and that you, you could see there like oh, that might be like a slight indication that he was like working a bit harder at Luca already but as I said not much of a difference we can see a bit of a difference though where they finish the set because once they drop the barbell the oxygenation got back up and that's what is like indicated by the blue color here that they were like kind of fresh again and could start the next round from this peak they started their second set of echo bike and oxygenated deoxygenated just like a slight bit and then once they were off the bike we see like the biggest difference with this workout Luca was able to go through the 20 front squats unbroken 
um, just because he has like much higher capacity and he used like a lower fraction of the oxygen that he had in his legs basically and that means he wasn't working as high of an intensity as Joel for example. Joel on the other hand as is indicated by uh, this zigzag pattern had to take a, a lot of rests when he was going through the front squats um, not just to get through these but also to conserve himself for the last round of 80 kilo front squats which we knew would be like very challenging for him. To sum this up, um, with the elite physiology what we could see is Luca was able to get through the workout in a cyclical pattern. So if he was biking or doing front squats we didn't see that much drastic of a drop in his oxygenation profile whereas for Joel he had to take strategic rests because the weight was high enough in order uh, for him to desaturate so much that he basically needed a break. And that kind of goes to show what the difference actually is. And now what is the reason for this difference? Basically it's like a difference in capacity. It can be your capacity to take up oxygen, uh, so it's like your respiratory system. It can also be your ability that is limited by like your cardiac output, basically like your heart that is providing blood to the active tissue, which would be the muscle. But it could also be the muscle itself that is not able to as efficiently use the oxygen that is arriving there. What can you take away from this? So there are basically a few practical applications how you could use what we just showed without using muscle oxygenation. And that could be as simple as RPE. RPE stands for rate of perceived exertion and it basically is a scale from 1 all the way up to 10. Where 10 is the maximum power output or like the maximum intensity that you could only achieve during competition when you really push yourself as hard as you can. And one is basically doing nothing, sitting on the couch, resting. When we prescribe workouts, usually each workout gets prescribed with a certain intensity so you can reach the right stimulus. And independent of your physiology, you can always adjust your pace. For example, how fast you go on the bike, how many RPMs you're having, uh, what your stroke rate is on the row. Uh, in order to get to that desired outcome. If you want to learn a bit more about RPE, you can click this link in order to get to our website and read through. We really hope that you learned something new and liked the video. If you did so, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel.